Hello crafters, I'm glad to see you back. Today I'm going to do a little bit more on this painting. You may remember it from an earlier video. This is one where I did um, some texture paste. So I used a, a texture paste immediately on the canvas in a white. Then I did my acrylic pour over the top with a, a swipe with the silver metallic. Then I um, put a silver wax paste over all of the raised parts and made this painting, which I'm very, very happy with. However, I haven't sealed it yet, just yet. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for just a little snippets video today about how I use a spray sealer to finish some of my paintings. So this is the product that I'm going to use today. This is an Ameri uh, DecoArt Americana product. It's their acrylic sealer and finisher DAS12 and I've got the gloss, it also comes in a matte. What I like about this one is it's a multi-purpose product. So it's not only a finisher, it's also a sealer. So you can use it before and you can use it after. So anything that does um, twice as much and only takes up one amount of space in my crafting space is a good product. So as usual it says um, to use it in a well ventilated area and not to concentrate or deliberately breathe in the fumes. So I'm going to take this outside to my patio and uh, I'll take my painting out too. Um, I'll also take the camera. So this time you can come with me. See you out there. So here we are out on my deck. Normally when I spray the paintings, I put them out here on my table and I spray them on the table, but uh, oh, it was going a bit dark. Now there we go, we're back in focus. Um, but to, to make it easy, I'm going to just hold it in my hand so that you can see what I'm doing. Now, I'm also stood with the wind behind me, so if we can't hear because it's blowing in the microphone, I apologise for that. Um, but uh, I also stand when the, with the wind behind me when I am doing the spraying, because I want the spray to blow away from me um, rather than towards me. So first of all, you're going to give your can a good shake. I've already been shaking this one for a little while and interesting this one this one doesn't say about shaking for um, a particular length of time some of them will have a um, like a metal ball or something inside and will say to spray for um, to shake for one or two minutes or until the ball inside rolls cleanly so what I like to start to do is just to spray the edges let's see I can bring it up so you can see so I'm just going to place it flat on the palm of my hand and just spray the edges. Now the, the can will normally tell you how far apart, how far away. This one says approximately 10 inches. And I know from experience that if you try and do lots of sprays and make it very glossy, you'll end up with things running and it will be worse than if you hadn't done anything. So light coats are definitely the key. That's it, one side, give it a turn. And the, the fumes are all blowing down the patio away from me. But if you have any kind of um, sensitivity to sprays and fumes and smells and things, then you would want to make sure that you're using some kind of mask or um, doing it, you know, like I am outside in a very well ventilated area. And now when it comes to doing the top, normally I'll do it in two directions. So I'll do one light spray and then I'll turn it. So I'm just gonna do, let's see, see if you can see it. One light spray this way, going backwards and forwards. Then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and just spray lightly again in the other direction. And that should do it. So I'm going to pop that back down there on my patio table. Um, it's very fast drying this spray and it doesn't say anything about the amount of time that you want to wait between coats. Some of them will say that you will need to leave 15 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, 24 hours or so on between coats. So I'm just going to leave this about 15 minutes because I know it dries quickly and then I'll come back and do another, um, another coat for you. Now one word of caution of course if you're working outside is to watch out for bits of fluff. When I came back after my first coat I noticed that I had a couple of bit, little bits of hair or fluff or something on the canvas where it got stuck in the wet varnish. So if you are arting outside watch out for those kind of environmental problems. Of course here we have birds and things like that so it could have come out and it could have been far worse. So I'm just going to give this one more coat now. When I do my second coat, I tend to be um, a little bit more generous than I was with the first. I get a little bit closer and maybe do a little bit more because I want to try and accentuate the nice glossy finish now on this second coat. 
coat. I'm still making sure, however, that it's blowing away from me so I'm not breathing in those fumes. But saying that, it doesn't hurt to hold your breath anyway. It's only a few seconds and then you breathe out afterwards and blow all those fumes away. Okay, so that's my second coat. I think I'm going to do a third, so I'll just put this back down and we'll see you again in a minute. So I've just given my painting a, a check over once more for any stray hairs or uh, unwanted insects that might be on it. I'm giving it its third coat and now it's completed. What I like about this is that you get a, um, a glossy finish to it, but it's a different type of gloss to the um, Minwax Polycrylic, which is much thicker. Uh, this gives a, a thinner gloss, so in the event that you have a painting which has texture, like this one, I really wanted the texture to still show through, rather than add um, a, a really thick, um, thick brush on varnish, um, like the Minwax. So if you want to give yours a, a glossy finish, like this one, but without the, uh, the very thick finish, um, or you have a lot of texture that you want to show off, then this one, this is the Deco Art Americana, let's hold it towards the light there. The acrylic sealer and finisher, DAS12, and of course I will provide a link where you can get this product if you want to give it a try. So that's just a quick snippet for today, how to use a spray sealer on any of your artworks. And I hope you've enjoyed spending some time with me outside here on my patio. See you again soon for a future video.